Expert Thunder Emperor Blade Slash! Akira screamed. Yet the power of the giant blade was far from what it had been before. Rapidly, the strike was drowned in the explosion of the stars. The stars kept collapsing and swallowed Akira, who wore a terrified expression. Akira was sent flying away while coughing violently. The red-robed old ancestor immediately removed the barrier, and Akira fell heavily on the ground outside of the fighting stage. The winner is Maximus, the elder casually announced, even though the implications of this win were tremendous. The entire valley was silent, as if no one had been able to escape from the shock. Akira had actually lost, and he was the number one true disciple of the profound Thunder ancient race. What kind of humiliation was this? However, when they thought of Maximus's terrifying strength, all the true disciples fell silent. The interloper was only at the sixth level of the peak holy realm. What if he broke through to the seventh level in just a few days? What if he reached the eighth or ninth level? How terrifying would his combat strength be at that time? <laughs> Although this Maximus is a martial artist from the outside world, his strength is enough to earn our respect, stated a true disciple in the first row. That's right. Furthermore, this brat is someone that the goddess truly values, a woman next to him added. After the silence, the applause became more and more intense. In the end, Maximus relied on his own strength to achieve glory. On the high platform, the ancient Thunder Patriarch expert felt a little puny, but he was satisfied. His Damask family had fallen a little over the years. In the prior competitions, they could only aspire to third place, if that. Now, not only had Akira obtained the second place, but anyone with discerning eyes could tell that his strength was not inferior to Maximus's. He had only lost at the last moment because of some accident. Otherwise, it would be hard to call who the champion would be. Looking at the gloomy face of Akira, though, the patriarch was a little worried. Although his son had been arrogant in the past, he was still a normal person. Yet somehow he looked different. It was just that the patriarch had no idea why. The Axe family patriarch was also unhappy in his heart. This kid from the outside world was so powerful. The demigod patriarch must have placed a lot of importance on him by now. How could he still make trouble for him? With a stiff face, he smiled and uttered, Kid, per competition traditions, the number one core disciple can make a request to the organizer, as long as it isn't too out of line. If you have any requests, you can make them now. Maximus was startled. The Guardian Protector had never mentioned this aspect of the competition before. He thought about it. Of course, the reason the Guardian Protector had never mentioned this to Maximus was because she had never expected that he would be eligible to participate in the True Disciple competition by reaching the Peak Holy Realm. She had assumed that he would be relegated to the Under 100 competition. Maximus straightened his face and proposed while cupping his hands, Julie and I have been in love for a long time. I hope the Patriarch will fulfill my wish. The group of True Disciples had already guessed that Maximus would make such a request, so they were not surprised. However, the Damask family martial artists, who treated Julie as a goddess, were somewhat dissatisfied. Still, they did not dare to refute Maximus. The Axe family patriarch turned to Guardian Protector and stated, uh, Julie is your disciple, so you... The Guardian Protector interrupted in a quiet voice. This child is so talented. He is worthy of Julie. What is there for me to object to? Seeing the Guardian Protector had agreed, Julie once again leaned close to Maximus with a face full of intimacy. I agree, she uttered wistfully. At this moment, a white-robed old man appeared in the sky. No one noticed how he had managed to surprise the crowd. It was obvious that no aura was apparent, and he looked like an ordinary person. However, the more they attempted to investigate this internal strength base, the more they discovered that the white-robed old man was unfathomable. The Axe family patriarch closed his eyes and uh. sighed. He knew immediately the implications of this old man's appearance. Greetings, Ancestor Archuleta. The Axe family elder led everyone and hurriedly bowed. The Axe family true disciples erupted in awe. Ancestor Archuleta, 
an old man repeated in awe. A relative standing nearby added, The true god ancestor of the Axe family. The old man then explained, The opening of the heavenly god realm is near. Why would a true god ancestor appear? I think this must be the demigod clone. A trace of doubt flashed in everyone's eyes, but they did not dare to look up at the white-robed old man. This was not only because of his internal strength base. Just the words demigod and true god made everyone stand up straight and pay the closest attention to their behavior. This was also the first time Maximus had seen such a powerful expert. Although his heart was shocked, his face was calm as he bowed together with Julie. The white-robed elder ignored the Axe family elder and the others. He only looked at Maximus and Julie. After a long time, the valley became silent. The heavy atmosphere made many people break out in a sweat. Suddenly, the white-robed old man laughed loudly. He exclaimed, Good, good, good. I didn't expect to find two future true gods today. Follow me. The ancestor flicked his sleeve, and his sleeve suddenly expanded. In the blink of an eye, it wrapped around Maximus and Julie, and they all disappeared in front of everyone. Everyone raised their heads, and their faces were filled with shock. The sudden appearance of ancestor Archuleta was because of Maximus and Julie. The evaluation had stunned them all. Even a genius like Mycola wouldn't dare say that he would eventually become a true god. The ancient family lines had existed for so many years, and there was no lack of geniuses like Mycola. There were only a few who could become true gods. Indeed, Mycola could only aspire toward reaching the Holy Realm Inner Precinct. The chief of the War God tribe, meanwhile, felt a surge of excitement. He mused, With the protection of Archuleta, the Axe Family Patriarch won't be able to execute his agenda. What a slap in the face to him. The ancient race competition ended just like that. All the patriarchs of the great families left their disciples. However, the discussion of Maximus and Julie didn't stop for a long time. Not long after that, the news spread to the ears of all the disciples of the ancient race. Even some of the great power disciples in the outside world heard about it. Meanwhile, within a fiery cave in the Axe family territory, Archuleta, Maximus, and Julie sat cross-legged facing each other. Seeing Maximus and Julie being so reserved, Archuleta offered with a smile, You two don't have to be so nervous. I called you here because I wanted to see the two future true gods. Maximus quickly demurred. You think too highly of me, sir. The true god level is not something I can reasonably hope for. Old ancestor Archuleta commented with a smile that was not a smile. Kid, have you really never thought of becoming a true god in the future? Maximus's face stiffened, and he smiled awkwardly. Julie quickly helped him out of his predicament. Old ancestor, the difficulty of breaking through to the true god realm is something that I have experienced before. I agree with Maximus. We are not worthy of such a promise. Archuleta snorted, then protested. The two little ones are too modest. Do you think my eyes are wrong? You have reached the peak holy realm before the age of 40, and at least one of you has a combat strength comparable to the holy realm out of precinct. If you can't break through to the true god realm, who can? Both of them were shocked, but they immediately understood. With the eyesights of the demigod ancestor, it wasn't strange for him to be able to see their approximate age. The reason why the two of them were so humble was they were afraid of offending him. But if Archuleta led the discussion completely, then it really didn't matter. Archuleta stared at them, then went on. Maximus, are you using some sort of secret technique? It's clear your life force doesn't match your biological age. Luckily, though, you already have a lifespan of 4,000 years. So really, you are just a baby. Julie's heart tightened, and she immediately stared at Maximus, who had never mentioned this fact before. Maximus forced a smile, and roughly told her about what happened in the Middle Continent. Of course, he didn't tell her about the Nine Flames Fire Tower, or how he had become enemies with the number one true disciple of the spiritual race. Archuleta had no interest in gossip, so he didn't ask about the matter further. 
he continued in a straightforward tone. You have lost about a thousand years of your life force. As long as you can break through to the holy realm out of precinct, or even the consummate level, a thousand years of your life force won't be a big deal. This will even be more the case if you break through to the true god realm. It's just that losing life force will have some effect on your future internal strength and breakthrough. So, I'll give you a hand today. Archuleta suddenly pointed his finger at Maximus's forehead. Maximus was shocked. He wanted to move, but found that his body had been imprisoned. Julie's expression changed dramatically at this moment. Even if it was a demigod ancestor, she wouldn't let him harm her Maximus. But soon, Julie was shocked to find that the finger that was pointed at Maximus's forehead had a strange fluctuation of the aura of life. He was actually transferring life force to Maximus. Since he was inhabiting a true god's body, it was nothing for Archuleta to lose 1,000 years. With the life force transfer, Maximus had almost recovered in the blink of an eye. For a moment, he was ready to break through the bottleneck to the seventh level. This was the change brought about by his life force. Julie saw that Maximus had recovered, and her expression eased up. After that, she uttered with a cold expression, Spirit race! She was nearly gnashing her teeth in anger. Maximus helplessly responded, This is only about Milad. It has nothing to do with the spirit race as a whole. Don't target the entire spirit race. Huh. Julie only had the presence of mind to reply with a cold snort. However, Archuleta laughed and interjected, when did this happen? With your little boyfriend's current strength, how could he be afraid of Malad? When Malad was at his peak, he was only on the same level as Yulian. And judging from what Maximus said, Malad also used a secret form of magic. He won't be able to recover in a short period of time. My guess is he's even worse than Yulian at this point. He paused to make sure Julie was listening then concluded, When the two of them meet again, your little boyfriend will be able to kill that guy instantly. You can just leave the matter of revenge to him. No need to interfere. Julie was so embarrassed by the words, your little boyfriend, that her face turned red. If it wasn't for the fact that Ancestor Archuleta was a demigod, she might have rolled her eyes. After Ancestor Archuleta smiled, he seemed to have thought of something. He waved his hand and several purple fire crystals floated out of the molten lava next to him. Purple mountain cores? Julie shouted in a somewhat alarmed tone. Ancestor Archuleta chuckled as he confirmed. Yes, it is the purple mountain core. Originally, this lava was just ordinary lava. Well, at least for a demigod like me, it's just that I've been cultivating here for so many years and the power that is constantly spreading out has caused the lava to undergo a qualitative change. Over the years, the depths of the lava have begun to produce purple molten cores. He sighed then went on. The purple molten core is useless to demigods and holy realm inner precinct warriors, but it's different for those at the peak holy realm and holy realm outer precinct. The Axe family patriarch has already taken a lot of these resources, but what I have left, I will give to you two. Maximus swallowed hard. After listening to the introduction, he understood what kind of precious item this crystal was. It had an indescribable benefit to his internal strength base. If he could obtain the purple molten cores, it wouldn't be impossible for him to advance to the ninth heavenly level of the peak holy realm in a short period of time. However, Maximus knew better. With great difficulty, he looked away from the purple molten core and cupped his hands to Ancestor Archuleta. He began to reason. Senior, I will not accept rewards without merit. You have already given me a thousand years of life. I cannot... Ancestor Archuleta oh. sighed, then interjected. I naturally have a request for you. Maximus and Julie looked at each other in dismay. As the dignified demigod old ancestor, his main body had a true god internal strength base, but he still had a request for them? Seeing this, Archuleta waved at the two of them, stating, 
Sit down in peace. I'll explain right away. After that, he began to describe the sky-reaching divine realm to the two youngsters. Maximus's eyes sparkled when he found out about the ins and outs of the heavenly god realm. Could he find the entrance to the continents of the gods through this realm? And if he couldn't enter the continents of the gods, what was the point of becoming a true god in the first place? If one could not get to the continent, it in fact seemed a sad face. Archuleta added, I know that 99% of the true gods who entered the sky-connecting realm died. If they really found the entrance, why hasn't anyone returned after so many years? Maximus comforted him. The continent of the gods is different from the forgotten continent. Perhaps that passageway can only be entered but not returned through. Archuleta gave him a mournful smile, reasoning. There is a weak yet persistent hope in every true god expert's heart. This is the only way they can patiently wait for the heavenly god realm to open again and again. Otherwise, they would lose hope and likely go crazy. This would be a disaster for the Forgotten Continent. He uh. sighed then went on. This is especially the case when the crazy true gods are fighting each other. The scene then is apocalyptic. If it comes to this, all the inhabitants of the Forgotten Continent, even the true disciples, would perish. Then Archuleta gave Maximus and Julie a meaningful look before explaining. Both of you have reached the peak holy realm before the age of 40. I have never seen such a thing in my life. Perhaps you also know from some other source that the Forgotten Continent currently doesn't have divine energy. As a result, even true gods are trapped at the early first calamity true god level. No one has ever reached the peak of this level, though there are rumors that a special method for doing so exists. Anyway... Without divine energy, your chances of reaching the middle stage of First Tribulation True God are slim. However, given your extraordinary accomplishments, perhaps you both know a secret that even demigods and true gods do not know about. Perhaps this secret can help you advance to the middle stage or even the late stage. He sighed again before concluding. My main body has never entered the heaven-connecting realm before. That's why I'm not sure either. However, the stronger one is, the greater the possibility of finding an entrance to the continent of the gods. You have a better chance than any martial artist before you. Today, I will help you because I hope that one day, if you really find the entrance and head to the continent of the gods, you will return here and tell us how. Of course... If there is really a restriction that prevents you from returning, uh, just pretend that I didn't say anything. Maximus and Julie looked at each other. Then Julie stated solemnly, Sir, don't worry. We want to help. We want more true gods to successfully enter the continent of the gods. Maximus then thanked Archuleta from the bottom of his heart. He knew that ultimately, once the ancestor departed from his main body, his life force would dissipate at a rapid speed. At that point, the sacrifice of 1,000 years would prove a tremendous one. After all, demigods technically only had the lifespan of Holy Realm experts, even if they had much greater internal strength and combat strength. The reason why they could live for so long was because of their inhabitation of the physical body of a true god. Once they no longer had this body, the after effects of living for tens of thousands of years would start to impact the body of the demigod. Some demigods could live for two to three thousand years if they took good care of their bodies. If they didn't, they would perish within a few hundred years. Seeing what Maximus was thinking, Ancestor Archuleta smiled and offered, Don't look like that. As a demigod and a true god's clone, I have reached the limit of my internal strength-based potential. I've long been fed up with this life. Giving you my life force has granted me a new sense of purpose. Maximus felt a twinge of sadness. If he couldn't find the passageway to the continent of the gods, what kind of situation would these true gods and demigods be forced into? He didn't want them to be reduced to such a miserable state. He had to find the path to the continent of the gods. 
A resolute look flashed through Maximus's eyes. Julie faintly sighed and then mused. If only the Forgotten Continent could have ended up being a hundred times bigger when it was formed. If that were the case, it would have been enough to accommodate true god experts. Archuleta quickly advised. But at this point, we must face reality. He then laughed awkwardly and commented. Well, that's it from me. When the purple molten cores leave the lava I've cultivated, the energy within them will begin to dissipate. You two should absorb them and cultivate as soon as possible. And Maximus, be sure to recover from your injuries before beginning the process. Thank you, sir, Maximus stated solemnly. Archuleta went on. I have already sent a voice transmission to the patriarchs, warning them to keep their holy realm inner precinct warriors away from you. You should be able to avoid trouble, at least while you are in the Axe family territory. But for now, I don't want to stop you. Time is of the essence. Ancestor Archuleta looked serious as he spoke. Maximus cupped his fists and offered, Master, you have given us invaluable guidance. We can't thank you enough. After that, Maximus started to recover from his injuries, and Julie started to cultivate. The territory of the War God tribe was shrouded by thick layers of fog. Through the fog, one could vaguely see a scattered series of pavilions that reached up the mountain and into the sky. A terrifying aura gushed out from the most impressive pavilion of all, which was elaborately decorated and reached seven stories into the air. Bastard! How dare he injure Taris! I'm going to rip him into pieces! A green-robed elder roared in a sinister manner. The elder's face was covered in blotches, and his withered hands contained an extremely terrifying power. This old man in a green robe was Terrace's grandfather, a super expert who was not far from the true god realm. He was the strongest person under the demigod realm in the clan. However, at this moment, a majestic and irrepressible force rushed into his soul. Galen. You can't attack him, a voice declared. It carried a supreme aura, causing the furious green-robed elder's face to turn pale. Y you you are... Galeon searched for the words, but he was in shock. Huh. Have you really been in seclusion for so long that you can't recognize your ancestor's voice? The other presence challenged. Galen felt as if he had suffered a heavy blow. His body became unstable, and his breathing became shallow. Elder Hewitt? Galen gasped. Just like Archuleta, Elder Hewitt was one of the true god experts left behind in the war god ancient race 100,000 years ago. Galen had lived for more than 10,000 years, yet he had only met Elder Hewitt once before. He had never expected the Elder to appear, much less thwart his plans for revenge. Hewitt proceeded. Galen, if you attack this brat, you will be making the true gods your enemies. Galen immediately broke out in a sweat. Just who was this kid? As a true god, Hewitt's horizons of perception were naturally different from a Holy Realm expert's. Just like Ancestor Archuleta, he knew that Maximus had reached the sixth level of the peak Holy Realm before the age of 40, and his combat strength was comparable to the Holy Realm Outer Precinct. Hewitt's first thought was that this kid was likely to break through to the intermediate First Tribulation True God Realm in the future, and the possibility of his finding the entrance to the continent of the gods was greater than theirs. As such, Hewitt was naturally unwilling to see such a genius fall. At the least, he couldn't afford to offend such a genius. Perhaps in the future, he would lead the other True Gods out of the Forgotten Continent. However, when he saw Galen's sorrowful expression, Hewitt couldn't help but frown. No matter what, Galen was still a Holy Realm inner precinct expert of the War God tribe, and he was only a step away from becoming a true god. And yet, Hewitt did not want him to suffer a massive embarrassment before his advancement. When one became a true god, it would be difficult to advance without divine energy. Although Hewitt had broken through several tens of thousands of years earlier than many true gods, he still knew his limitations. After thinking for a while, Hewitt took a deep breath, then mused to himself, Oh, forget it. 
If this kid is killed in his pursuit of becoming a true god, then our estimations were wrong, and he was not meant to soar that high. Surely, Archuleta will understand as well. Thinking of this, Hewitt stated calmly, Although you can't do it yourself, you can order anyone below the Holy Realm in a precinct to carry out the act. Galen, who had been quietly grieving, was overjoyed. Really? Really? He stammered. Huh. Would your ancestor lie to you? Hewitt asked rhetorically. Uh, thank you, old master! Galen expressed, bowing. This kid was merely a peak Holy Realm martial artist. Even if his combat strength was comparable to the Holy Realm Outer Precinct, it was not as if he was unbeatable. Galen could not help but grin. The Profound Thunder Ancient Race's territory was covered by a series of dramatic, craggy mountain ranges, and lightning constantly rained down over the whole area. It was accompanied by thunder that occasionally shook the mountains. At the peak of the Thunder Mountain, in a majestic hall, Akira was kneeling on the ground, with a humble and sincere expression on his face. In front of him was a being formed by pure blood energy. Your Highness, the Divine King, Akira expressed. He lowered his head and attempted to keep his legs from trembling. He had never imagined that he would have such good fortune. To be a servant of the Divine Demon King was, to him, a greater accomplishment than reaching the true god realm. The red energy figure queried, can we take down that brat? Akira had a guilty expression as he reasoned. I have failed you. I know I lost. The Divine King shot back. Could it be that this kid has also absorbed blood cores? Did you sense anything? Akira's expression became even more ashamed as he explained. The other party did not absorb the blood cores, but still his strength has increased by a lot compared to a few years ago. The blood energy surrounding the Divine King was somewhat violent. He was used to the standards of the continent of the gods and considered the inhabitants of the forgotten continent to be a bunch of buffoons. But Maximus had changed his whole theory of the difference between the zones. Forget it. There must be some secrets in that kid's body. Wait until I leave this place, the Divine King ordered. Are you about to escape, Your Grace? Akira was pleasantly surprised. Soon, but not now. I'll give you a mission. Try your best to unify the Northern Continent and the other ancient race members within a few decades. The Divine King proceeded. Akira hesitated, then reasoned. This minion of yours is only at the seventh level of the Peak Holy Realm. Within a few decades, even with the help of the Blood Demon's will, I will never be able to reach the Holy Realm in a precinct. I can't even defeat a demigod, let alone a true god. How can it complete this mission? The Divine King smiled coldly before explaining. Of course, I know this. Just wait and see. In a few years, I will absorb the blood essence of the true gods. Then... I will be more powerful than any entity the Forgotten Continent has ever seen. Yes, Master, Akira declared in an excited tone. The Phantom Monarch went on. Once we've unified the ancient race, you can get rid of all the true disciples in the Northern Continent and send their blood essence to me. This will shorten the amount of time I require before proceeding to the continent of the gods. Akira's eyes were burning with passion as he declared, Just leave it all to me. Several years passed in the blink of an eye. Back then, Maximus had only spent a few days to fully recover from his injuries. After that, he started absorbing the Purple Mountain cores. With Archuleta watching, Maximus naturally couldn't transfer the Purple Molten Core into the Nine Flames Fire Tower and let Lord Flame refine it. Therefore, he can only absorb it slowly and bitterly. If he couldn't turn it into an elixir, the speed at which Maximus absorbed and refined the Purple Molten Core wouldn't be much faster than other martial artists. Meanwhile, in a few years' time, Maximus' internal strength base had skyrocketed, breaking through from the peak of the 6th level to the mid 
eighth level.